Skype now with my special guest, Jesse Ventura, and our live studio audience. Let's get another audience question. This time, Oliver Reynolds. Mr. Reynolds, over to you. Good afternoon, Mr. Ventura. Hi. My question to you is, as a former Navy SEAL, do you agree or disagree with the recent release uh, book by the six-member SEAL team and, this, and the objections of the uh, Pentagon? Uh, I don't have a problem with it. The op was over over a year ago, and I feel I have a right to know what went on because our entire military is paid by my tax dollars, and I believe I have every right to know what they spend my tax dollars on. And I also would like to hear from boots on the ground. I don't want to hear from the media what happened in the op. I don't want to hear from bureaucrats in Washington what happened on the op. I would like to hear from boots on the ground, somebody that was, was actually there so that I can make a determination. But how does it help, Jesse, if, I mean, my brother's a British Army colonel and has done tours of Afghanistan and Iraq and so on. Sure. How does it help operationally if all the guys around are all wondering who's going to put this in a book? I mean, surely well, they all sign up, don't they, to not write about their experiences? Well, he's out now. He's a civilian now. And uh, I, I just, you know, to me, he has the First Amendment rights, or he should have them. Uh, if he's not giving away anything that's listed under national security or that could affect anyone in the future operations, I say, why not? Like I said, I'd like to hear from boots on the ground what actually happened there, not some fragmented story that comes out of Washington telling me what happened. So I, I don't have... And besides you, the media and the SEALs themselves have allowed themselves to become like the Green Berets in the 60s and 70s now. I don't like the fact that you even know we exist because back in the 60s and 70s, nobody even knew who we were. Well, that's out of the bag now. Hollywood's made plenty of films. You've had my friend Dick Marsenko, who created SEAL Team 6. Mm -hmm. He's written a half a dozen books. So if the creator of SEAL Team 6 can write books about what they do, what the heck? If he, if he doesn't put in jeopardy anyone, why, why is our government so up in arms about that he does this? What we're all agreed on is that the death of Osama bin Laden was a good thing. But, but be honest, is America any safer now than it was when he was killed? Or from all we're seeing now in the Middle East, all the uprisings, all the kind of reverse Arab Spring, if you like, are you concerned that it may be... A hornet's nest is getting out of control. No, because I think that lots of times these uprisings are orchestrated. I believe, I believe in the works of Colonel L. Fletcher Prouty when he said, nothing just happens, everything is planned. I truly believe that. And so these uprisings that are happening right now, we don't know really who's behind them. They could be our own CIA did we helping know to do it. Right, well, who knows? But did we know who we were backing? I mean, that's one of the key questions. Backing at what? Well, in Libya, in Egypt. I have in, no idea. You know, all these countries. When you, uh, when you oppose a Mubarak or a Gaddafi or so on, did we really know who these rebels were? And are we now perhaps well, seeing the, the results of not knowing too well who they are? We're here wanting to give democracy that peop to people who have lived, in my opinion, in the Stone Age. Mm -hmm. I think the bigger question to ask is, here we go, another religious war. Because most every war that happens on this planet is due to the fact of religion. One religion doesn't like the way another religion worships God, so we're going to kill you. I love religion, you know, and I say that sarcastically. Oh, hang on, I thought, I thought And I say that because I've, Jesse, op I thought, I've openly admitted I'm an atheist. I thought you said earlier that all wars were about, you know, oil and, and corporations. They are, but they're all religious-based, too. So they're all about religion and oil and corporations. Could be, And sure. occasionally getting rid of the Nazis. Yeah. So my point is well, that the wars Nazi, can be, wait, the wars Nazi, can be over wait, many things. Wait. The Nazis was religious too. Look what they did to the Jews. So that brought religion in. Vietnam was religious because Diem, our puppet president, and our country brought a hundred Christian Vietnamese down to the south to be the government. Well, the southern Vietnamese didn't like these religious characters from up north, so they then became the Viet Cong. So 
All wars, pretty much in my lifetime, have had some religious basis, but certainly big business gets in there because wars are very profitable to certain big businesses. And of course, big business needs to be in the Middle East so that we can get the oil out of the Middle East, so we can get the lithium out of Afghanistan. You know they discovered a vein of lithium there they say is worth a trillion dollars. Well, what is lithium used for? Every cell phone, computer, and soon to be electric cars. Let's talk about why we're really there. We're not there. How does any of these wars affect our freedom in any way? The United States is not in any threat. They're not going to do a Normandy invasion on us, Al-Qaeda in Virginia. Yeah, but hang on, are you being slightly naive, aren't you? Because I'm not re- being naive, I sir. Are, I think you are being naive no. because I think that it's clear one of the main reasons that America went into Afghanistan was to try and get Al-Qaeda dismantled, the organization which committed the 9-11 atrocity. Really? Well, you don't think so? Well, how come Al-Qaeda put the heroin business out? They took all the poppy growers and stopped the production of heroin. What would you have done? Wait, now how much of that illegal heroin was propping up the international banks with laundered money, and when it dried up, the first recession happened? Well, now that we're back in there, we aligned with the poppy growers, and the heroin business is back up full swing again. Okay, what I thought we fight a war on drugs here. All right, Jesse, what, Seems would, we're not. what would you have done? on September the 12th, 2001. What would you have done if you'd been president? What would I have done? Yeah. I would have done a legitimate a legitimate investigation to find out what exactly happened on 9-11. How did they know who did this so quickly like they did Lee Harvey Oswald? How quick they knew Lee Harvey Oswald well, we killed because, Kennedy. Because the people who did it were identified and we knew who they were. Well, then why couldn't we have stopped them beforehand if they were identified and we knew who it they were? It was a failure of intelligence. Everyone's accepted No, it that. wasn't. We knew before with Condoleezza Rice's memo on August 6th when it stated right in the memo, bin Laden to steal planes and run them into buildings. And more stuff is coming out now also, how much the Bush administration ignored the intelligence. It was almost like they ignored it because they wanted it to happen. Oh, come off it, Jesse. No, not oh, come off it. Every, wait a minute. Every war fought starts with a false flag operation. You can't, in all seriousness, sit there and try and make uh, anybody... Okay, let me ask you this, Piers. Wait a minute. Let me, wait, wait. wait. Let me ask you something. How many, how much studying have you actually done of 9-11 other than what what the government's told you and what mainstream media has told you? I've been studying it for years. I was editor of a national newspaper. I've I've talked to Covered it Wait in a depth every day for really? five, six months. Really? So I know a lot about it. Well, and then one thing how I do come, know is, let me ask you this: you then. cannot say that any member of the Bush administration knew it was going to happen or wanted it to happen. It's a ridiculous thing to say. Ridiculous. Okay, let's talk about your BBC. I have a tape of a BBC reporter broadcasting directly back to England talking about a third building has collapsed. World Trade Center Building Seven talks for twenty. Seven minutes. All the while she's talking, World Trade Center Building 7 is still standing right behind her. It didn't fall for another half hour. Yet, they were doing a pre-broadcast back to England no. that, the, yes, it's true, no, you need to that take this a break building here. fell and it hadn't fallen yet. If you're trying to make out the British Broadcasting Company, one of the most respected news organizations in the world, was inventing huge buildings falling over, you, need to, have a little, you need to have a break, Jesse. We'll come back after the break Are and we'll talk about Israel me? and you? Iran. Are you kidding me? This is a fact, my friend. That was Jesse Ventura live along with our studio audience. We left a fairly heated debate about various theories that you have about 9 11 and so on. Let's move on to. Oh, and the government only has a theory. Right, well, the government. Uh, has no, this is a theory. Their theory is 19 Islamic radicals armed with box cutters defeated our multi-billion dollar air defense system mm-hmm. all while conspiring with a bearded guy in a cave in Afghanistan. That is exactly what that's happened. That's their theory. No, that's not a theory. It's a fact. That's their theory. No, Jesse, that's a, a fact. fact. That's what happened. Really? Yes, I'm Were sorry to kill your conspiracy theories, but that is what happened. Then why haven't anyone been brought up for trial? Because they they all haven't died. given one shred of evidence they all died in a trial. In case you, case you missed the story. Well, they then what do we died. got all these guys in Gitmo for? 
and we got the supposed confessor to it, who they waterboarded 180 times to get the confession. Got news for you, peers. If they waterboarded you 180 times, you'd confess to it. You see, now you're, you're missing the point. On that very point, I don't agree with Guantanamo Bay. I didn't agree with the waterboarding, personally. But let's move on. Let's move on right. to uh, Iran and Israel. If you were the American president, with all the jungle drums beating now about Iran, would you take any military action? Well, first, let me state that Iran has to do this. Because if you notice, the United States doesn't mess with any country that's got nuclear capabilities. They only mess with countries that don't. So all countries that don't have it strive to get it because it's a safety mechanism to have it. So of course Iran's going to try to get the stuff. Should they be allowed to have it? Should they be allowed to? I don't know. Well, yes or no? I don't know. God, you're a man of opinions. No, I don't. I, I, you I, may I, be running I, for office. I'm entitled to know what you think. Not right now. You don't. I need to study it more. How very I need convenient. To look. Yes, it is very convenient. So you know about everything that happened before 9-11, but right now when you have Iran potentially nuking itself up, you don't have an opinion. Well, let's leave that up to the nuclear inspectors that go in there. They will tell us whether they're nuking it up before you decide to bomb them. I didn't decide to bomb anybody. No, but you seem to be very favorable You're trying to put towards. words into my mouth all the time, which is, it's, it's not a very good technique when you're debating with somebody. Just to stick you're to going to, well, How many political offices have you held? Uh, none. Then don't tell me how to debate, because I've held two. Oh, I've debated many times. But you've never won, you've never won an election where a debate I was required. I think you make some very sensible points, and you make some crackpot points. That's your opinion? Yes. How many people here think I make crackpot points? Yeah. One. How many think I make sensible points? You're in a minority, my good friend. You're the minority. Let's, I said you made some sensible points. Let's go to another audience question from Jared uh, Grossman. Ask your question, Jared. Hello, Governor. Yes. I'd like to know why you think that politics in America today why has it become so polarized and why has it become so hate driven and how do you think we can fix that? Well, uh, politics in America, the problem, the major problem is the Democrats and Republicans that I explain in my book, Democrats and Republicans, no more gangs in government. Uh, they've created a system based completely on bribery. Now, if we do bribery, it's hypocrisy. If we do bribery in the private sector, we go to jail. Yet their entire political system is based upon bribery. Who can bribe and give the most money to the politician? And now, thanks to our illustrious Supreme Court that ruled that corporations have the same rights as individuals and that money is free speech, well, we're now being inundated with so much money from the corporations buying the Democrats and Republicans both sides that... Uh, Look at this hypothetically, a foreign country could now control our elections because all they would have to do is form a corporation, start pumping money into the super PACs, plus there's no, uh, you don't, they don't have to say where the money comes from, which is criminal. Every, every candidate should have to state openly, open disclosure, where they get every dollar. You're not getting that now. So the whole system is corrupted now. The Democrats and Republicans are at fault because they've been in charge for 150 years. They can't pass the buck on it. And until they clean up the system, that's what you got. It's bribery. Jesse, I'm shocked. I just agree with every word you just said. <laughs> no, you just want to get the crowd back on your side. Not at all. <laughs> Not at all. As I said to you, I I'm agree. Te I'm teasing I, I agree I'm with every word. Yeah. I think the whole super PAC thing is completely out of control. No, it, and I, you're right. In I, the end, China right now could finance a run for the presidential election with one of, uh, of their sponsored people from one of their companies. It's I, I, I think that this ruling could be the downfall of our country. And the only way, the only way we can stop it is to amend the Constitution. Yeah, I That's agree. the only way you can overrule the Supreme Court, and we need to do that. Let's take a break, Jesse. Okay. We'll come back and talk about uh, Clint Eastwood, the empty chair, and gun control.